Here's an easy little project that you can use to personalize a gift. You start with a group of needles on the right hand side of the bed. I've actually gone on this bulky machine from needle number 28 to needle number 56. And I'm going to make a loop. This is the loop method of doing ravel cord with just your waist yarn. To make the loop, I'm going to put a clothespin on this yarn over here on the right hold it loosely. This is on my last row of the waist yarn and then knit across and cut it. Having that loop means that later on it'll be easy for me to remove the ravel cord. I'm going to start with waist yarn and end with waist yarn. I'm going to graph the beginning to the ending and I need to remove this waist yarn easily after I finish. I have threaded my machine with red and white yarn and I'm going to do two rows of the white yarn. And I'm not using a color changer. You don't have to have a color changer for this project. This is an any machine project. And after I have my second row of the white, which is coming from my left hand feeder, I'm going to park the yarn over on the left hand end of the bed. Just stick it under the edge of the bed. This is a bias project and it's going to crawl across the bed. That's why I started on the far right end. After knitting the white, I'm going to make an increase. On the left, I'm going to take a two prong transfer tool and move those two stitches out and leave an empty stitch for the third stitch. Over on the right hand side, I'm going to use the same tool to do a decrease, but I have to be sure and take that empty needle out of work. Now I'm going to thread the carriage with the red yarn and knit two rows. Once my red rows are knitted, I'm going to park the red yarn, which is coming from the right hand feeder under the right hand edge of the needle bed. There's a little groove there that works just great for that. And again, I'm going to do an increase on the left, leaving an empty needle in work, which will become an eyelid, which later on will work for the draw cord on the back. And then on the right, I'm going to do a decrease and I'm going to take that empty needle out of work. Now I thread up with the white and I knit two rows. Now I don't cut my yarn. I'm just going to carry it up the edge of the work and it's only one little thread every two rows and I'll get away with that just fine. And I do it again. Increase on the left and decrease on the right. And you can see it's already noticeably moving across the needle bed. After a while you're going to want to take the comb off if you're using one and you're going to want to just have a claw weight on each end of the work. That's really all you're going to need. So here I am putting on my claw weight. And it's time to take the white out of the feeder, park the white yarn, put the red in the feeder, and knit my two rows. And you're just going to repeat this for a long time until you have the bag as big as you want it to be. Now, if you don't have enough needles for the size bag you want, you're going to need to either scrap it off and move it back to the right again so you can work left again, or use a garter bar to move it over on the machine. After doing this a while, look how it looks. It's definitely a trapezoid. I took one of the weights off so that this right hand side would show up. And then on the other side we have the candy stripes which are going to be on the diagonal. So really quite fun and different to work on. Now if you did this with self-striping yarn, you wouldn't even have to change colors. Or you could make wider stripes or you could use scraps. Just do whatever you feel. 
Now, to finish this up, I'm going to do one row instead of two, and I'm going to use the color that is not the color I started with. I started with the white, so I'm going to do one row of the red to finish it. And then I need a big enough piece of yarn to kitchener stitch, typically three times the width of the knitting is required to do that graft between the beginning and the end. And then I need a little bit of waist yarn to finish this off. So I'm going to go ahead and use some of this green waist yarn. Now my little gift bag is made and I'm cutting the white yarn also. I have a little bit of sewing to do, so let me show you how that's done. I have this funny trapezoid shape in my lap, and you're probably wondering how that's going to fit together. Well, this one goes here, this one goes here, and you see they're going to match up and make a square. Now this isn't the biggest gift bag. You can make yours as big as you'd like, though. And I'm going to thread a tapestry needle with the yarn and begin the sewing. I'm holding the waist yarn together and letting it curl under so that I can see my actual stitches that I want to sew. And I'm going to start by going across into this first white stitch and go straight across into the first red stitch. I'm trying to get clear of my waist yarn, just like that. And then draw that up gently. This is the last row of knitting. This mimics the last row of knitting. It is not a tight seam. Now I need to find my second red stitch, which is peeking through the waist yarn right here, and go back into that same white stitch. So I reuse that white stitch. New hole, old hole. Draw that up. Just mimicking the tension of a row of knitting. Now I go to a new white stitch next door to the one I just came out of, go across, straight across, and into that same red stitch that I used before. In other words, new hole, old hole. And draw that up. Now I need a new red stitch. But I'm going to reuse the white stitch and draw that up. And then a new white stitch and go reuse the red stitch. So it's always going from a new stitch next door to an old stitch across the street. New stitch in the white next door, old stitch across the street. This is a Kitchener graft. Hopefully by just doing a few more, you'll have enough to follow and be able to do your own Kitchener. So new to old, now a new white stitch, old red stitch, new red stitch, old white stitch, and I'll get the rest of that sewed up and show you the next step. Well, I've sewed that up and this is how it looks from the wrong side. Let's flip it inside out. I need to get this green yarn off. Now here's what I've got. This is a row of eyelets through which I can pull an eye cord and make a tie. And this is the section that has to be sewed together. The bottom of the bag needs to be mattress stitched together. So come up through one of the spots that is a full stitch from the edge and then go over a thread and go under one of these horizontal bars that is a full stitch from the edge and then come across to where you first came out on this side over here. This is my thread where it comes out. Go in there and pick up a bar then come over here, 
and pick up the next horizontal bar and over here get the next bar. This is great mattress stitch practice and the next bar. Another bar on this side. Now that doesn't really look like anything but if you grab both ends of that yarn and you pull up that closes the seam and then you can just keep going picking up one over here pick up one over here just stay one stitch from the edge two threads right there is the spot to go over here here is the spot to go and now over here and over here and again after a few stitches just pull them up and that closes your edge so I will mattress stitch from here to here and hide those ends then I still need to make an I-cord drawstring for my little bag I want to make a three stitch I-cord so I'm bringing out three needles and I want my I-cord to be red so my three needles are being e-wrapped with this red yarn and I will knit one row and get a weight on there at least grab a couple of loops with the weight so it will pull down now I'm going to change the setting on my carriage so I can get I-cord I'm simply going to put the left part button in because I'm going to approach from the right here when I'm going left it's going to slip. It slips when I go toward the left, knits when I go toward the right, and it closes up and forms a perfectly round cord, just like the ones you might have done with a spool when you were a little kid. So I'll go ahead and make a long enough cord for a drawstring for my bag. I knit it until my weight hit the floor and now I'm going to sew off those three stitches with a tapestry needle and the tail of my yarn. Tighten that up. I can hide the end of that yarn by simply running it down the middle of the I-cord. Now I'm just going to work the I-cord in and out of the eyelets. I can do it with my fingers. until it is all threaded into the gift bag. Now here's a beautiful pair of my socks that I have knitted for a gift and to wrap them I can just tuck them in this gift bag pull up the drawstring tie a little bow And won't that be cute? 